Hello my friend, in this video I'm going to be going over 9 music link myths that are getting you less Spotify streams and pointing you in the right direction of how you can actually start correcting these things. So with that said, let's jump right into it. So after studying and reviewing dozens of music link tools and actually using them to get over 4 million Spotify streams on my own music, I've been able to identify nine common myths around music links uh, that need to be busted. And that's what we're going to be doing here today. Because at the end of the day, music links are just a type of page in the marketing world known as landing pages, basically just web pages with one specific um, goal in mind. And by leveraging the exact same marketing tactics that the largest companies on the planet have been using to make millions of dollars in sales with well-optimized landing pages, music artists like us can improve our music links to get more streams and get more fans and listeners. So before continuing, I wanted to let you know that I've also written an article on this topic, as you can kind of see right here. So if you'd like to follow along or if you simply prefer the written word format, you could simply Google Music Link Myths Best Friends Club and you'll be able to access this article for free. There's a whole bunch of links within this that you'll also want to check out and I'll point them out to you as we go along. So let's dive right in to myth number one, which is the better a music link looks, the better that music link performs. And although there are an endless amount of music link tools and websites for musicians out there, the truth is that these pages and templates are usually focused on looking kind of pretty rather than actually getting conversions and getting people over to actually stream your music. And this is because the music link that gets the most streams or sales is often not the one with the prettiest or fanciest design. It is the one that has the simplest design and is most focused on a single call to action, which is getting a stream. In fact, sometimes the best performing marketing material in general is downright ugly or is so basic that it actually might make you cringe. So in the seven years that I spent as a head of marketing at a small tech startup in Toronto, I was honestly surprised every single time that a really ugly but simple ad or landing page would outperform designs that were created by our in-house design team to look like really you know fancy and fresh uh, and i'm talking ads and pages that barely had any images used ugly times new roman fonts at times and had almost none of the elements lined up so that it looked like kind of thrown together because in reality hu us humans can look past imperfections like that as long as the message that is being conveyed is super clear and targeted. Fancy designs can actually distract from the message or call to action that you want your listener to take and can even slow down your website to the point where they click away before it even has time to load. Although in an ideal world, your fan will reach your page, then stream your song, follow you on Instagram, make a purchase, visit your homepage, and then come back to visit your TikTok page. In reality, it's better to clearly define what the number one action is that you want your fans and potential fans to take and only focus on creating a page that works towards that desired action. And really, ultimately, what I'm saying here is you're going to only want to have one button on that page and have no other interactive elements whatsoever because you want to have it focus on one single clear call to action. And if you want to learn a little bit more about optimizing your music link pages i do have a guide called um music link i do have a guide called music landing pages which is a guide for spotify and conversions and more and right here on the article here there is a link to this that you can visit if you would like to learn more about optimizing your music link to getting more streams Mooch moves us on to myth number two which is very tightly associated with myth, myth number one and that that myth is that more integrations equals a better music link and there are a lot of music link platforms that call their tool smart links because of the fact that they can automatically pull in links to all of the different streaming services or stores where your song or release can be found. Smart, right? Uh, but again, in my years of experience being in the marketing world and the 10 plus years that I have of marketing my own music, I found that any type of marketing material can really only be called smart if it leads to more conversions getting the result that you actually want. In the real world, having a music link with a hundred different options to choose from actually can lead to something called paralysis by analysis, which is when a person takes no action at all after being presented with too many options. And that's basically what's going to happen when you have a page with 350 different streaming link services. Again, although it would be great to have a potential uh, listener or fan visit your page and then click every single link, uh, not focusing on one clear call to action will most likely confuse your page visitors make them overthink things, and then just leave your page. If your goal is to leverage the Spotify algorithm and grow your Spotify streams, only give your fans the option to go to Spotify. If they don't have Spotify and they're using something else, they can still listen on Spotify for free and will be able to easily like Shazam it or look it up in their own streaming service if they'd like to. Uh, for more ways, again, on how to optimize your music links, uh, there is that guide that I mentioned here and you can also visit as well. 
Myth number three is that you don't need a music link and you can send your traffic directly to Spotify. And this is particularly a very, very important when it comes to running ads. So we'll dump into this. So when first learning about Facebook ads, music links, and tactics for growing on Spotify, it can be super normal to wonder why have the extra step of sending people to a music link if you can just send them directly to Spotify, right? There's more steps involved. People are probably going to jump off of that process. So why not send them directly there? So it is a great question. And in a perfect world, we would actually be able to simply just send people directly to Spotify. But there's a couple of reasons that that's not a good thing to do. And I'm gonna list them out for you here. So first is that sending potential fans directly to Spotify greatly increases the chance of the Facebook algorithm optimizing around bots and click farm accounts instead of real fans. So this is particularly important if you're running ads. Um, Believe it or not, there's a huge weird problem with Facebook ads about click farms and bots. Um, basically, this means that there's going to be a lot of not fans clicking on your links and driving, uh, like making your costs seem really great on Facebook. And Facebook doesn't really have any need to really address this at the moment because it makes some advertisers, advertisers feel good about you know, the vanity metrics that they're seeing and they're, they don't really take a huge step forward in trying to fix this for whatever reason. So that's one reason that you're going to want to make sure that you're using a music link in between. Another reason is when a potential fan hits your website, you can track them with other tracking pixels like Google ads, YouTube ads, Spotify ads, Snapchat, anything like that. You could have other advertising pixels on there, which will, can expand your advertising efforts beyond Facebook in the future. And in addition to this, by sending it to a music link first, you can also leverage things like lookalike and custom audiences with Facebook as well. And then third, and it's not the most important one, but it is important, but sending potential fans to your website first increases the steps that a fan has to take, like mentioned. But this also increases the quality of that fan because they have taken more micro commitments to you. And this might seem counterintuitive. It took me a while to kind of understand this, but after seeing it, I do believe it. But it's a, a small thing where the more little yeses that you give to an artist or even like a company or anything like that you're actually taking a very small micro commitment and just building trust between the two of you so a, a music link in between those processes does kind of help that along um and for all those reasons and really the first one is really the most important since it can really waste your money if you're experimenting with facebook ads for musicians which is why i do have a course here that you can click it's called facebook ads for musicians you can click into it it's completely free uh and it'll give you a full rundown on how to get set up and running with spotify conversion ads using facebook to grow your spotify streams if you're interested in growing your streams with spotify uh if you're interested in growing your spotify streams with facebook ads i'd highly recommend checking it out because it has just about the same information that you get from a paid course and it's completely free but moving along to myth number four is that you need expensive gear or tools. Uh, there can be a lot of pressure for artists and musicians to spend their hard-earned cash on super expensive cameras, equipment, and marketing tools in order to properly release and promote their music. And music links and website tools are no exception here. However, the truth is that you can likely use what you already have or, or make a few small and focused purchases to get where you need to be. This is why I'd actually look into like something like free music links or a solution that gets you a lot of bang for your buck. Something like maybe a website that you can use to create individual landing pages in the style of music links. If you want to learn more about some of the free music links out there, you can go ahead and click on this link in the article. And I do believe I have a, a video up right now about free music links. There's only one that I'd recommend, but that's definitely worth checking out. Because the real truth is that the best way to improve the quality of the content and the music that you put out and the results that your music is getting is simply through repetition. Remember that quantity breeds quality and that the true quality of your actual content, like the music and all that kind of stuff, will be always more important than how good your camera is, how polished your mix is, or how beautiful your music link is. So let's move on to myth number five, which is that your first release is going to get you millions of streams. Uh, properly running release campaigns that promote your music is a skill, and just like any skill, you're going to suck at it at first. Growing your streams on Spotify is all about consistency and building momentum. It's not some miracle cash grab system that takes no effort on your part. It takes time to start triggering the Spotify algorithm consistency, and it's that consistency and growth over time that is most likely to lead to a Spotify editor finding checking out your dang pitch and I do have a video on Spotify editorial playlists and how I got on like a whole buttload of them so if you want to check that out uh, link will be above 
and basically holding back on releasing music or holding back on running Spotify conversion ads to promote your music link because you're wasting time picking music links does just that. It holds you back. Myth number six is that marketing to Spotify doesn't have an ROI because basically with music links, that's really the main purpose that most people are using them is to grow on Spotify because here's the truth. You will likely never see a traditional return on investment like getting $3 in Spotify royalties for every $1 you spend on marketing your song with Facebook ads or really almost anything. What you can see is the growth in your fan base, increased credibility from successful releases, and increased data sources for further marketing, like pixel data so that you can retarget your listeners with additional offers or additional songs to listen to, that kind of thing. Most independent artists will make small time money by adding to their back catalog of music over time or by getting a boost of streams from algorithmic or editorial playlists. If you're only out here looking to make money from your music, my recommendation would be to go find yourself a job and you'll be able to easily calculate the ROI that you get there. And we'll move on to myth number seven which is that there is a silver bullet song or release. It's putting all your hope in a particular song or album that will be the one that pops off for you is a recipe for failure. Even if you have the greatest song on earth, the truth is that it doesn't even take good music to make it. Music is completely subjective and realistically you don't get to decide what a hit song is, the people do, which is kind of beautiful in a way if you really stop to think about it. No matter how pretty your music links are or how many streaming services you link to that, page will change that. Songs you think are hits could be flops and songs you think aren't your strongest can be fan favorites that take your career to new heights. You can't control what song is a hit or not, but what you can control is how frequently you show up with new music so that the fans have more opportunities to make that decision for you. And myth number eight is that there's a silver bullet marketing tactic. Finding success on Spotify and in music career and really anywhere in general really is not just about one tactic. It's not just about Facebook ads or getting on sweet playlists because these things are important, but it's also about building a brand, social media, web presence, building momentum or buzz, and most importantly, having an active and growing fan base of real genuine music lovers that actually care about you and what you do. When all these things come together, your music will reach the ears that it truly deserves to reach. And myth number nine, wrapping it up here, is that Facebook ads are easy. Facebook ads are a real pain in my ass, and if there were a better way, trust me, I would ditch Facebook ads in a heartbeat. The platform is constantly changing, costs are constantly fluctuating, and it can be hard to target the perfect audience. Unfortunately, the results that ads are capable of getting are too hard to ignore right now, and any artist that isn't on top of this is getting left behind. Combining ads with music links is a proven strategy that has worked for countless artists and not just me, but the truth is that you need to commit time, effort, and money to different experiments, managing your ad performance, and staying on top of platform changes. It's the harsh truth of it, but if you do want to make it, no one ever said it was going to be easy, and that's just how it is. So those are nine music link myths, kind of meandered into Facebook ads and a little bit of general advice as well, but it all kind of... It's all the same thing. You're using music links to grow your Spotify streams or to grow your music career, and it all kind of ties together. It's like poetry. It, it all rhymes. So with that said, if you found this video useful, make sure you like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Otherwise, good luck on crushing it with your music links, and best of luck on your next release. And I will see you in the next video, my friend. Have a good one.